today we're going to be talking about the various ways in which narcissists argue with other people to keep them stuck and keep them engaged in dysfunctional relationships. You know, when, when you're dealing with someone who's healthy and you have a conflict, you assume that the other person that you're talking to is listening to you. You assume that the other person is going to be fair. You assume that the other person actually wants to meet you in the middle, right? And you go through life with this perception, thinking that everyone that you come into contact with feels the same way. That is until you bump into someone who is either a vulnerable narcissist, a covert narcissist, or a grandiose narcissist, or someone who is on the narcissistic spectrum. And that is when your entire world will be turned upside down. So number one, narcissists don't play fair. They don't argue fair. They don't play fair. They don't have conversations that are fair. And so the number one thing that you'll look for when you're dealing with someone, what you'll discover is that during conflicts, when you're having a disagreement with this person, you will notice that the other person has no interest in trying to understand your point of view. I used to say that with my ex-husband, I finally realized that it was his agenda to not hear me. So I spent hours and hours, days, weeks, years even, thinking that I will one day finally be on the same page with him. And then I realized that his agenda was to not hear me. So our arguing and our disagreements and conflict resolution, it did, didn't exist. It wasn't never his agenda to get from point A to point B. So one of the techniques that, that narcissists use to keep you engaged and to keep you just stuck in the relationship is to argue with you in what is called bad faith. Number two, another way that narcissists argue is they use denial or they just outright lie. So you accuse them of saying something that you know that they said, and what do they do? They turn around, they absolutely deny it. Hand is in the cookie jar, on the cookie, and they're telling you that their hand is not in the cookie jar, and you're loco, there's something wrong with you. Their hand is not in the cookie jar. So this is another tactic that people with high narcissistic traits or narcissists will use when caught in a disagreement or in a conflict. They just lie. Number three, another tactic that narcissists, narcissists use while in a disagreement is they absolutely reframe the narrative. In other words, like you could confront the narcissist and say, I remember when you said this, right? And I heard you say this and so-and-so heard you say this and they turn around and they say, oh, that's not what I mean. They completely reframe the entire memory that you have over this situation. And that, in my opinion, is a form of gaslighting, and that will actually throw you off track and make you feel insecure and make you feel confused. And the goal is to confuse you and to throw you off track so you can not hold this narcissist accountable. Another tactic that narcissists use is they use bullying. They threaten to leave you. They may even threaten to harm you. So this, this overt, of overt attempt to intimidate you. So intimidation is another way that narcissists argue to win an argument. We have to remember that a narcissist's agenda is to maintain power and control over a relationship. And so when they're starting to feel like they're losing power over the relationship, or they feel like you are actually gaining some control over yourself and how you perceive them, it's not uncommon for a narcissist to threaten you in some way, either intimidate you bodily with harm or to intimidate you through making fun of the way you, the way you think, intimidating you psychologically, um, or they threaten to abandon you. But the idea is there's a threat involved during a disagreement with a narcissist. The thing that narcissists do while in an argument is they deflect. So the goal is to throw you off track. The goal is to make sure that you don't stay on point with your what you want to argue about because they don't want resolution. They want power and control. They want dominance. They want you to feel confused. They want you to feel like you have no sense of self. They want you to lack self-esteem. And so when you get involved with a disagreement with a narcissist, they will deflect from the topic of conversation. As they are deflecting this topic of conversation, what is actually happening is you're getting thrown off balance, you're getting confused, and they can actually put you in a situation where rather than talking to them about something that they did, you find yourself defending yourself, right? So here you are wanting to have a conversation that you think is fair, you think this person might be able to meet you halfway, 
And all they're doing is lying, denying, blaming, deflecting, and making you feel like you should be in a position where you have to defend yourself. Another common tactic that narcissists use to argue with people is crazy communication. It's the good old word salad where what they're doing is they're bombarding you with information. They are distorting reality. They are accusing you of not remembering things the way they really are. They will distort facts. They will make up facts. They will deny facts, right? And what they're doing is they're just throwing, bombarding you with all this information, you know, maybe even accusing you of things that you're not guilty for. And then you're totally emotionally upset. And by the end of the conversation, you're exhausted. You're mentally exhausted. I can't tell you how many people I've coached where they were just like, at the end of the conversation, I was like, I'm crying uncle. I just wanted to stop. And that's the goal. So oftentimes this crazy communication goes nowhere. They say things that throw you completely off track. I remember one time I was having a conversation with my ex-husband um, and he actually slapped my son in front of a friend of, of my son's. And I said to him, you cannot slap your son in his face and especially in front of his friends. And what is this? Like, this is humiliation. Like, how could you do this to him? And he turned to me very, very seriously. He said, do you know that 50% of married men in America have affairs? You know, and I was just like, what? It was just to throw me off track. It was to make me feel insecure. And I called him out on it. I said, what is this about? Like, why would you say that? You know, I didn't understand narcissism at the time. I didn't even know I was codependent at the time, but I knew that that was messed up. So when you're dealing with someone who's healthy, there's actually a desire to, for there to be conflict resolution. When you're dealing with someone who is on the spectrum of narcissism, what you'll notice is that conversations really never get from point A to point B. There really is no conflict resolution. You cannot speak to someone who's on the spectrum about your feelings. What will happen is whether you're dealing with a grandiose narcissist or a vulnerable narcissist, you will be considered wrong they are considered right. Your feelings are insignificant compared to how they're feeling. And so if they start to feel slighted by you, and if they start to feel like you are dare suggesting that they are not correct or they've done anything wrong, if you dare suggest to someone who is so sensitive, right, and so incapable of meeting someone, you know, halfway, then what you will notice is that you'll be met with all of these very immature uh, responses. And they're all designed to keep you guessing and to actual avoid conflict resolution. You will never have resolution with a narcissist. You will only be exhausted. So I hope this short video has helped you understand a little bit more about the tactics narcissists use to keep you off track and to keep you engaged and to keep you confused. My name is Lisa A. Romano. I am the Breakthrough Life Coach. And if you want to learn, learn more about healing from codependency and even narcissistic abuse, please check out my next 12-week Breakthrough Coaching Program. This is an online coaching program you can take from anywhere in the world. I launch it twice a year, and I moderate the group myself along with the team. And the testimonials and the transformations that come out of this program are absolutely brilliant and amazing to have people enter the class feeling you know, intimidated, having low self-esteem, not able to identify a feeling, um, not qu quite understanding how they ended up where they ended up. You know, people who come from, you know, affluent backgrounds, people who come from, you know, less than affluent backgrounds, people of all walks of life from, you know, psychotherapists to stay-at-home moms to stay-at-home dads to uh, physicians to neuroscientists have come through this class. And, um, it's working out really, really well. And if you want some more information, you can check it out at www.lisaaromano.com. I don't know too many people that have come from the perfect childhood home, but I do know that we're all subconscious. I do know that we're all reactive. I do know that below the veil of consciousness, we're operating with a default mode network, and we have been all subconsciously programmed to uh, believe certain things that may or may not really reflect who we really are. But until we awaken to this fact, until we really dig deep and investigate who we are, what do we think, what do we want, what do we need, until we understand where we've come from, we really can't understand where we're going, right? When we understand where we are 
and we understand that who we are and what we are is a result of what we've experienced, we can gain a whole lot more control over where, what we're, where we are going. We can't fix a hole in the wall you can't see. So if you're somebody who resonates with my work and you want to learn more about what you can do to dig in, dive deep, and heal from codependency and learn how to live an authentic life, check out my 12-week breakthrough coaching program. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell because every month I'll be picking one winner to win a year-long membership to my Breakthrough Warrior membership site. Be careful out there, dear ones. Namaste. Bye for now.